All of humanity throughout all points of time has always been dominated by spatial features. Talking about Euclidean geometry. Well, even Euclid talked about, he didn't use these words obviously, in the ancient Greek, but even Euclid talked about something that preceded geometry. That is a unmanifest null point, i.e. a point of inertia. I refer to it as trans-Euclidean geometry. Uh, Professor uh, Eric Dollard referred to it as counter space. Um, that's what it is. It's inertia. Now everybody asks me uh, talk about defining magnetism as the reciprocating precessional hyperboloid. Well, people know what was something that reciprocates, and hopefully you know what geromagnetic precession is, or you know what precession is. It's not complex. So what defines the hyperboloid? So I've already told you, and of course you know what a donut is, the shape of a donut. Okay, now imagine the inverse or the negative image of a donut. It's a hyperboloid. What is a hyperboloid? It looks like an hourglass shape. Okay, that is the negative image of force and motion. I've already shown you in the prior three videos that we have a toroidal force and motion divergence of magnetism. And what we have here, we have the same Gaussian flux right here, but this is completely different. This is a centripetal returning point of increasing inertia and acceleration. You can also see it with a magnetic viewing film. Right along the edge, you can see the dielectric inertial plane. That dielectric inertial plane is exhibited right here and right here. You can even see it with the ferro cell. Okay? Let's take a look at the hyperboloid. Here we have uh, two wooden discs. We're strung together with uh, some uh, rope. So here we have the hyperboloid. And if we look at it like this, oh my god, except for the lines being perfectly straight, which they need to be curved linear, but I have no way to demonstrate that to you with this hoop device. But we're looking at a hypertrochoidal pattern. If you take these straight lines that you see directly on and you make them curve linear, you will see the hypertrochoid pattern constantly overlapping if you take the side view of it. And this is exactly how the field dynamics look. Let me straighten this out. There we go. And then, here we go. Here we have the hyperboloid. See it? Hourglass-like formation. Now, if you take the negative image, which actually is the positive image, of the hyperboloid, here we have force, I mean, here we have inertia and acceleration. This is the trans-Euclidean geometry that defines the point of inertia and acceleration, which, exhibit, which is a present right here and along the dielectric inertial plane right here. Here we have the negative image of the donut. Okay, so draw the donut out from here down to here and from here. So we have a torus or a donut. It's hard actually making a hyperboloid shape out of this uh, hoop. But, uh, this is a negative image. This is a hyperboloid. Okay? This is the exact same pattern except for the straight lines. Let me get things straight again and then twist them. This is the exact same pattern that we see underneath the ferro cell. Oh my god! It is exactly the same pattern that you see underneath the ferro cell except for the straight lines. They're curved because all force and motion is hooked to perpetually and forever and always chained to, hooked to, tied to. That's right. The point of inertia. Now, so instead of these straight lines, you'd have to imagine these as curved lines. So it'd be curved linear. Okay, and then you have a hypertrochoidal pattern, which is exactly what you see underneath the ferro cell, which exactly defines the equation that I discovered in the book Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, which is free, by the way, on archive.org. I'm not selling anything. The book is completely free. It's hard to get this lined up. Okay. A hyperboloid. It's hard to actually get this to twist right. So you see what's going on here? Actually, when this is magnetized, now you see, this is something else nobody else thinks about either. The quantification for this humongous thousand dollar monster dangerous magnet is the quantification, okay? Not the quality, but the quantity of this is 100% identical prior to magnetization as it is after. So what's changed? The same difference that exists between coherent, fa in phase light, and incoherent light. Okay? 5 watt light bulbs, useless to read by, but a 5 watt laser will burn a hole in your ass. Okay? 5 watt incoherent light, useless. 5 watt coherent light will burn you. Period. It'll actually blow the back of your retinas out before you can even open your mouth to say a word. Same thing here. 
we have, now you say it's aligned domains. Okay, it's aligned domains. Well, that's a description. What does that mean exactly? We have point nonspecific incommensurability. If I actually take the magnetic viewing film, as I've shown you a hundred times before, you can see a line, a bright line, running right along the midpoint here. If I were able to take this magnet and slice it a million times, each little slice would be exactly the same. It is forced at. It's field pressure dynamics. There is no, there's no way to separate out a North Pole from a South Pole. You can't take this magnet and cut it in half. It's like, oh, here's a North Pole and there's a South. No. Each section, cut it a million times, a billion times, a trillion times. Each little thin little wafer, a thin little wafer will be have a North Pole and a South Pole. But that's also a description, as I'll tell you about in the fourth edition of the book. There is no such thing as a North Pole and a South Pole of a magnet. Well, what the hell does that mean? Well, throughout history, we know that a magnet has poles. It has a North Pole and a South Pole. Yeah, descriptively it does. Denotatively it doesn't. A magnet doesn't have poles. Well, what does it have then? Yeah, a magnet has poles. No, it doesn't. What does it have? Listen closely. Listen closely. It has the inverse of counter space. We have Euclidean geometry, not here, this is uh, the hyperboloid, which defines counter space or trans-Euclidean geometry. What a magnet has is the inverse of counter space, and that is space. And space, denotatively, is polarization. Okay, it is divergence. Okay, this is how Mother Nature draws a line. And we draw a line, we go like this, okay, there's a line. I start here, I draw a line. No, Mother Nature doesn't draw lines that way. The only way Mother Nature knows how to draw a line is like this. Boom, okay, right here, a single point, if you will, point of inertia, inertia. This is the only way Mother Nature knows how to draw a line. Doesn't matter how you do it, this is the only way Mother Nature can draw a line. You see what I'm saying here? Polarity. Oh, here's the North Pole and here's the South Pole. The only way we're able to differentiate a North Pole and a South Pole is due to EMR, electromagnetic retardation, the phase shift, as I discovered, which backs up uh, Maxwellian field equations and not Einsteinian relativity. There is a rarefaction on the North Pole and there's a compression on the South Pole. You see my videos on seed experiments? I expose seeds to the South Pole, they undergo uh, uh, compression and uh, expose the same seeds to the North Pole, they undergo rarefaction. They grow completely differently, radically differently. It's the same thing that uh, GPS satellites undergo for uh, time correction. People think that's actually uh, quantification for relativity, but it's not. It's simplex uh, field dynamics as explained by uh, uh, James Clerk Maxwell. Nikola Tesla. This is the same reason Nikola Tesla called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot. Because Tesla, excuse me, this is the same reason Tesla called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot. Because Tesla knew that Einstein was a moron. Relativity and quantum mechanics have no basis in reality. Mother Nature doesn't work off this mystical BS. Okay? You're thinking, well, counter space sounds a bit mystical to me. No, it isn't. Trans-Euclidean geometry when you talk about geometry, it's like talking about a child without a mother. This is how stupid humanity is. We think we're so advanced with our television sets and all our crappy ass devices and our iPads and our digital cameras. Okay? We're lauding the baby. It's like, well, where the hell is the mother? Okay? We talk about geometry till the cows come home. Well, what about that which spawned geometry? Inertia. Unmanifest. Not nothing, but zero, as in unmanifest. Because there's a huge difference between zero, meaning absolutely nothing, because that's a qualification. Something is absent of something else. Okay? There's no such thing as emptiness. Something is empty of something else. A shadow is not a thing. It is not a principle. A shadow is an absence of light. Okay? You cannot quantify a shadow. Well, sure you can. If you sit in a shadow and you're naked and you're wet and it's cold, you're going to die because you're sitting in a shadow, therefore a shadow isn't. No. A shadow is a privation of light. So, talking about space, this is all humanity understands. We blow crap up. That's geometry. We have explosions going on our engines. We uh, intake and outtake food. We live, eat, sleep, breathe, daydream about the geometry. Well, guess what underlies geometry? It's counter space. It's trans-Euclidean geometry, i.e. inertia. The same reason the flywheel on the compass behaves radically different here as it does here because these have the same exact magnetic flux density. Yeah, but this is accelerating, increasing inertia. This is increasing force in motion. What we have here is the toroidal 
force and motion divergence and what we have here in the center of the magnet is this this is the if I take, take this magnet and put it sideways what you'll see and you're able to see it with a magnetic viewing film and you're able to see it especially well with the ferro cell is this the hyperboloid which also processes is called the Lamore frequency okay it's a rate of geromagnetic precession which is necessitatively must exist. And this is the same thing you see underneath the ferro cell, except with curved lines instead of straight lines. This is the hyperboloid. I've got a hundred videos on the ferro cell if you want to see this pattern. A hundred, well over a hundred videos. Okay? This is exactly what you'll see looking at the face of a damn magnet underneath the ferro cell. It's like I said, except the lines are curved, they're not straight because I can't make these ropes curved holding them like this using these two loops but this is essentially the hyperboloid this is what defines magnetism is a reciprocating hey look these words up you don't know they're reciprocating processing hyperboloid that extrapolates out you know what extrapolate means I hope extrapolates out a hypertrochoidal okay just imagine these lines curved a hypertrochoidal pattern People say, what's a hypertrochoidal pattern? Well, you know what a spirograph pattern looks like? Yeah. You know what the pattern looks like of a sunflower? Yeah, that's a hypertrochoid. Which is also based upon the golden ratio. Because Mother Nature understands one thing and one thing only. Even before force and motion, force and motion, inertia and acceleration, that is the golden section. One, one, two, three, five, eight. Self-similarity, point non-specific incommensurability. What the hell does that mean? Point non-specific. Think about it. Holographic. You know, I don't know if you know much about holograms. You can take a holographic positive and cut out a little section of it and reproject the laser through that little tiny section of the hologram, and that little tiny section will still have all the information of the entire hologram. Same thing with this magnet. Well, here's the North Pole and here's the South Pole. Yeah, but you can cut it a billion times and each little slice will have a North Pole. Point non-specific is field pressure dynamics. Okay? It means that there is a point of inertia that exists here and here, but it isn't located there. What do you mean it's there, but it's not located there? Think about it! It is there, but it is not located there. Think. I'm going to tell you the answer. It is located there. It's not located there, but it exists here. It's forced there, but it doesn't exist there. It is forced there, but it does not exist there. Point nonspecific incommensurability means self-same identity that exists throughout this thing. It's like if you take a person, you take something and you cut it a billion times, each little section is just a smaller version of the larger. Okay? And you take a, a gigantic castle made of a billion Legos that are all red and you, you break them apart into a billion little components and each little, uh, each little piece is exactly the same as the larger piece. And it has a midpoint, but that midpoint will change regardless of how you cut it, how you slice it, because it is point nonspecific. The point of inertia and force and motion are separated there by field pressure dynamics, which operate based upon two things, force and motion, inertia and acceleration, i.e. magnetism, which exists right here at the centrifugal divergent edge, and increasing inertia and acceleration, which exists right here, and right along the midpoint right here. You can see this underneath magnetic viewing film. You can see it underneath the ferro cell. It necessitatively must exist that way. There is no other way to define a magnet and what magnetism is. It is impossible. It can exist no other way. It cannot, under any description, exist any other way. Okay? Now, if this thing were sliceable like a hunk of salami, like I said, you make a billion cuts out of it, each little slice will be exactly the same. Well, how the, how the hell did that happen? We had the, uh, the separation between North Pole and South Pole exist right here, right at the midpoint. But now, as I cut it, it re-exists, uh, it has uh, redetermined itself at uh, each intervening midsection of each and every slice. Well, how is that possible? Because it is there, but it is not located there. This is point nonspecific, and this is a tough word, because this is what the Greeks really, really, the ancient Greek Platonists and Pythagoras, they understood this well. They knew why it was so damn important. Incommensurability. Kind of like self-same uh, fractal identification. In other words, you can zoom in a fractal, keep zooming in a billion, 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 billion times, and the image will look exactly the same. 
Okay? You can take one billionth of a, of a section of a fractal, zoom it in, and it'll look exactly the same as the entire fractal itself. Same thing with a hologram. Point non-specific incommensurability. Now, as I've told you before in a prior video, we have the torus of force and motion divergence, and we have the hyperboloid of trans-Euclidean geometry, which is the negative image, analogously, if you will, of the torus. Think of a donut. Now think of the negative image of a donut. The negative image of the donut is right there. It's the hyperboloid. Oh my god, that's the pattern you see underneath the ferrule cell when you hold it underneath the magnet. Yes, Timmy, that's right. This is the secret of Mother Nature. The entire universe, the entire 100% of the visible universe is due solely to magnetism. Now, points for further discussion will be what is magnetism? What model does it follow specifically? It follows, you have to research this yourself. Take a long time to explain the Poincaré disk model. Google search it. Poincaré disk model of projective geometry. Okay? It's actually a three dimensional projection of a, uh, of a two dimensional plane. And that's exactly what magnetism is, kiddies. Magnetism, analogously, I'm not saying it literally, magnetism is exactly analogous in the, in, the, in the broadest sense, not the specific sense, to a holographic projection. Oh my god, you mean the entire three-dimensional cosmos is nothing other than a uh, Poincaré disk model projection. Yeah, it, it sure is. It absolutely is. It's undeniable, it's irrefutable, and that's the way it is. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two, go tell me to jump off a cliff, and uh, 